What is going on guys, DBG here, and these are the new cards in the Lights Out set. I'm pretty sure this set is coming out around 5 minutes after me recording this. Obviously these cards have been up on MTDB for about, I'd say, an hour or so. I was just in college so I couldn't get this video out quicker. So in this video I'm going to be going over the stats of all these guys and telling you guys if they're going to be worth picking up. First of all, with the EVO cards, I have no idea how they EVO up, so it's going to be a hard one to tell if they're going to be worth picking up and what price they're going to be worth it for. But anyway, now let's go on. So Shane Battier. We've seen Shane Battier's Amethyst card, and we know he's got a really good release. Shane Battier has only got four gold badges, which isn't great. He's got Steady Shooter, which is one of them, which is not good. Catch and Shoot is all right. However, no defensive badges for Battier is just kind of weird. Even if it is Miami Heat Battier, no defensive badges, really. Get a good three-point shot. He's got terrible speed of ball and acceleration. Terrible ball handling stats. However, his perimeter defense and lateral quickness and stuff are good. Steel rating's quite good. He's not going to be anything spectacular. He's just going to be really meh. Like, if there are certain challenges or online challenges or something where you need emeralds, he could be good. As far as, like, usable emeralds, he mightn't be absolutely terrible in-game, especially at the small forward position. But, yeah, he's just not great. Again, a lot of emeralds are kind of necessarily like a Zhou Chi type emerald from last year. They're not really going to be worth using. Now we're on to Craig Hodges. Craig Hodges is 94 three-point shot. Please, please quick draw. Please quick draw. They gave him quick draw and range extender. Okay, this card is interesting because he's got a really high three-point rating. He's got quick draw. He's got range extender. He can speed boost. He's not he's not fast, but he's not that slow. He's not unusable slow, although he's got no lateral quickness at all. Well, poor lateral quickness, no perimeter defense at all. He honestly, he could be a situational type player. He could be someone you could run against his zone, and he could sh uh, shoot the lights out. Especially with range extender with the way players spot up. You could put him as one of your last three off the bench, and if the other team sits in his zone, he could help to shoot the team out of it. While I don't think I'm going to be using this card much, he is not a terrible card. I'm not going to lie. He is not terrible in any way. So Steve Kerr is next. Steve Kerr is getting 94 three-point shot. He's got quick draw as well. Which is good, because without quick draw, his release was broken. He also, of course, they gave him steady shooter. He's got a good three-point shot, good ball handling. He's faster. He's better on defense. So he's just a much better version of Craig Hodges, except he evos up. I'm guessing Steve Kerr, my price, get, my guess is with prices on evo cards have been so off. I don't realize, like, I didn't realize how expensive evo cards were. So I can't see this card being anything less than, like, I'm trying to think what it the least price for this Steve Kerr would be 4 or 5k with a max price maybe 10k but again it all depends on how he evos up whether he's worth it or not as of right now I'm probably gonna say no but you just never know how they get how to go and they get better so Nick Young small forward slash two guard 89 three-point shot good speed speed ball and acceleration driving of 85 is good decent on defense badges wise he's got quick draw and range extender Okay, okay, and he also has no steady shooter. So this could be this could be an interesting card. He is going to be so cheap. Like so so cheap. He can dunk. He's moderately fast. He's a not bad defender. He's got quick draw range extender. And he has no steady shooter. This could be one of the more interesting cards in the game. This definitely go with that 93 vertical. 6-7 small forward, he can play the two. He could be someone that goes into a lot of budget squads and makes a big impact. Then we've got the guy I'm most excited for in this set, Ray for France. 93 point shot. His release is money. 88 mid range shot as well. He's slow. And hopefully, when he goes up to Ruby or Amethyst, that his speed goes up quite a bit. His block is good of 84. Rebounding is good as well. He's also got um, 14 gold badges, including catch and shoot, quick draw, which is huge. And hopefully, hopefully he gets range extender on one of his evos. I have no idea, but hopefully he does. Flexible release is also quite a decent badge. And yeah, like he is going to be a god. Like even as a base sapphire, I'm guessing he's going to be a 7 or 8 KMT. But even as a base sapphire, he's a good card. So if he is, like if he's around 5, 6 KMT, there is no question he's going to be worth picking up. However, if he is closer to 10 KMT, it all depends on how he evos. How easy it is to evo to Ruby and just what he evos too, ratings wise. So Al Harrington is a power forward with not great speed, but not terrible. Got a re really good three ball, really good mid range shot. Post game is 
kind of average. Good driving dunk, though. Defense, he's not great in the perimeter or inside. Steals, okay, I guess. See the badges. He's got 13 gold badges, and they're all shooting badges. So he's got, obviously, steady shooter. He's got catch and shoot. He's got quick draw. He got flex for release. Okay, this card mightn't be bad. He might not be bad at all. I use the lights out set, so they're all going to be able to shoot the ball. So, Al Harrington could be usable. Especially because him and Nick Young are going to be like 1-2 KMT max. Both of these guys could be alright. And then we got Katino Mobley, Evo card, that I don't see being any more than like 5 KMT. He has got steady shooter, he's, but he's got range extender, he's got quick draw, he's got difficult shots, which is good. He know, Katino Mobley, if he has last year's release, it was like J.R. Smith's from previous years. It is absolute cash. Um, the problem with this card is that he's a little bit undersized for the two. I wish he could have played the one. Like with these stats, he definitely could hold his own with the one. He doesn't have quick first step by the looks of it. No, he's all his, bad, his badges pretty much are shooting badges. So defensively, a good lateral quickness, decent perimeter defense. He's got not a great steal rating. Not going to knock him much, but he's just going to be a lights out shooter. And if his release is the same as last year, he's definitely going to be worth picking up. Anything less than 5k and he's a steal. Then we got Brent Barry. This guy, man, this guy could be the card of the set to buy. So, he's got a 94 three ball, 84 shot mid, an 87 driving duck, decent speed speed ball and acceleration. Unfortunately, he doesn't have an 86 ball handle, which he's had in previous years. He's also a good defender. And badges wise, he has got quick draw. Oh, I thought he had range extender. I don't know why I thought he had range extender. But he's got Lob City Finisher Gold and Lob Cheese is OP. He's got Tireless Shooter. He's got Catch and Shoot, Clutch Shooter, Quick Draw. He could be a nice card. Actually, he mightn't be better than Swaggy P. So, but he's going to be cheap, so I think he's definitely going to be worth picking up. Then we have got Chris Mullen. Chris Mullen, 93 point shot. Not terrible speed. Not going to dunk it at all. Not terrible on defense. Just overall, just solid stats wise. And he's also got Range Extender Gold. Steady Shooter Gold, which they give to almost everybody. He's got Catch and Shoot Gold, which is good. Unfortunately, no badges for going to the basket, but as a pure shooter. Like, this set is just a load of pure shooters. So, honestly, with the way they shoot after Badier, if you get the releases down, every one of them is probably usable. Then we got Ray Allen. If this is a quick draw Ray Allen, it could be GG. He's still got Hall of Fame Catch and Shoot. He does not have quick draw, so this is almost the same as the Ruby, is it? Oh, he's got quick first step. Did they give him a 90 dunk? 75 dunk. Decent speed, speed ball and acceleration. The quick first step badge is huge. 94 three ball. Okay. Okay, he's good. So I already used a Ruby Ray Allen in my budget squad. And I'm guessing that this Ray Allen, if he is cheap, will probably come right in. And we got Gilbert Arenas for the first time. He has got um, base 11 this year, I think, as well. So he's got 90 speed, 90 speed ball, 90 acceleration, 87 ball handling. He's got an A-drive dunk, which is bad. Good mid-range shot, good three ball. He has got quick draw, and he's got Hall of Fame range extender. Okay, okay, this is interesting. Quick base 11 and Hall of Fame limitless. Okay, we haven't seen this in a while. We have, well, not we haven't seen a while. We haven't seen this yet in, yet in NBA 2K20. Gilbert Arenas is definitely going to be an interesting card, and he's definitely going to be my starting point card. So yeah, that is a great, great card. Now we got Kevin Durant. So KD can speed boost, decent speed, good three ball, good mid range shot, good driving dunk. He's got a good block, good perimeter defense, not great interior defense. Rebounding is poor, but let's see the badges. He's got a Hall of Fame steady shooter, and that badge of Hall of Fame makes such a big difference for um, contested shots that it's actually not that bad um, when it's at that high. He's got silver quick first out, which is fine. Silver is good. He has got all the shooting badges, at least silver, gold range extender. My god, this card is going to be good. Like, 2k, the power creep. Like, compare these cards. Like, compare this card here to the Diamond Brandon Roy we got last year. That was this same set, the Halloween set. We got Diamond Brandon Roy and Diamond Jermaine O'Neal. And then who else did we get in that set? We got, like, Sapphire Larry Hughes was good. We got, like, Karam Butler. I'm trying to think who was in. We got a Shaq card, a Phoenix Suns Shaq card. Compare them to the cards we're getting now. 2k are trying to revive this game mode. It is crazy. Peja can speed boost, he can shoot the three, he can shoot the mid, he's got good lateral quickness, badges wise, obviously a Hall of Fame limitless, Hall of Fame catch and shoot, steady shooter, look, you can't have everything, uh, you <laughs> I wish he didn't have it at all, but again, Hall of Fame is better than it being anything less than Hall of Fame, quick draws, good badge to have, volume shooter, 
Unfortunately, not playmaking badges, but as far as spot up shooters go, he's gonna be perfect. And then you got Clay Thompson, who is the reward. So Clay's got a 98 three point shot, decent speed, speed ball and acceleration, not a great ball handle, is a completely locked down defender. And then badges wise, he has got 13 Hall of Fame. He's got gold range extender. He's a Hall of Fame quick draw. And I think the Hall of Fame quick draw might honestly be a negative. It could make his release too fast because I've used his release with gold quick draw and it's quite fast on Brian Winters. Hall of Fame quick draw might make that almost too fast. But sure luck, we won't know until we get the card. Catch and shoot Hall of Fame as well. He's got range extender uh, gold, which is good. Pump fake maestro. He's got basically all shooting badges. Got some great defense badges. I wish he had Hall of Fame clamps, but no, Clay's gonna be a brilliant card. The thing is, like, all I'm gonna say is, it is not worth locking in this set because you are locking in 14 or 13 of the same type of player for someone who is just a slightly better version of the same type of player. The only reason I would ever say this to lock in a, a set is if it's like the Ben Simmons set from Generation Next, where the reward is so much better and completely different than all the other cards. For these here, like, you're telling me that Clay Thompson is going to be significantly better than KD? He's not. He's not going to be significantly better than Peja. And like, I get it, Clay is good, but you're not going to notice that much of a difference using Clay instead of Peja, and you just might as well use Peja's the accurate, or you might as well just not lock in the set, keep your MT, not have to spend the million, the MT, the million plus MT it's probably going to cost, or at least six, 700k MT it's going to cost, and just hold it out and use one of these top two guys if you, are, if you have a lot of money. And if you're on a budget, uh, even Nick Young, I think, is going to do a job. He'll be a good player. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.